Bionic Gloves presents the Hands-On Golf Podcast, bringing anatomy and hand function to the forefront of glove design to improve comfort, fit, and performance. Bionic is a division of Hilrick and Bradsby Company, makers of Louisville Slugger bats and ball gloves. Bionic gloves are the only gloves designed by a leading orthopedic hand surgeon, Dr. Jim Kleinert. Welcome everyone to this edition of the Bionic Gloves Hands-On Golf Podcast. My name is Chaz Rao, I'm your host, and I'm here with Eric Gilliland at the Audubon Country Club here in Louisville, Kentucky. Let's get right into this week's email, and it comes in from Jeremy, and he says, Chaz, keep the podcast coming. Well, I am, right, right here now for you. Uh, he says, here's my question. What is the best thing I can do to shave strokes off my game? I just recently cracked 90, and I'm playing just under above the mark. Uh, I often go to the range and hit the boom boom stick, but when I analyze how many putts and chips I made in my last round, it was almost 60% of my strokes. Logic now tells me I should be practicing 75 yards and in, not the long ball. What specifically is a good practice drill to improve my game within the 75 yard radius? Eric? Jeremy, you've come to a realization that a lot of golfers never come to, and that's that most of your practice time should be spent 75 yards, maybe 100 yards and in. Um, and really it starts with hitting that shot from 175 yards onto the green. What you want to do is keep your standards fairly low. Anything on the green from that area is good because if you think about it, you've practiced that driver, you've gotten yourself into this position on say a par four, and now if you knock it on the green, worst case scenario, you three putt and make bogey, best case scenario, you make birdie, but you're not going to make a huge mistake and that's what gets most of us in trouble. So how do you practice that and how do you know what you're going to be able to do from 75 yards? What you want to do is make sure that you know where the club is at the top of your backswing on these shots. So let's say for example I've chosen a 56 degree club here which is my normal sand wedge. I want to know where is that club at the top of my backswing and be able to repeat that every time and then achieve a full finish position so I know what my finish is like every time. That's going to produce reliable results and I know how far the ball is carrying. So when we move over here to demonstrate the shot here in just a second, I'll be able to show you where I intend to take the club and how I intend to finish. And you want to get on that range and hit as many shots over and over like that as possible so that you can produce consistent results. Well, we'll be with Eric in a moment on the course, but Jeremy, of course, just for your participation, yes, you get the official Bionic Glove. It's, uh, it's that easy, everyone, if you'd like to participate. Remember, we're, we're bringing this to you uh, pretty much on every continent on this planet. So if you have a question and you're from anywhere, please send it to us, and if we use the question, we'll send you uh, um, a glove. It doesn't matter where you are. All you have to do is include, uh, send us an email, podcastatbonicgloves.com, name, full mailing address, whether you're right or left-handed, and what size you wear. And please keep uh, adding your feedback within iTunes, and please keep adding it within YouTube as the podcast continues to grow because of your support of this podcast. We're all, myself included, I've learned so much from Eric and all the other PGA pros. I thought I was a golfer. No, I'm <laughs> we'll have to do an episode where actually maybe I hit the ball a few times because that, that in itself would crack you up because I'm just a regular guy out here on the course, but these guys really know what they're talking about. So the support of you and with what we're doing here, it's all about us becoming better golfers. So now let's go join Eric on the course to see how we can resolve this issue and help Jeremy become a better golfer in this podcast. Now Jeremy, in the first segment, I mentioned that I've chosen a 56 degree wedge from 75 yards to hit this shot. Now you might wonder, how did I determine that? And really that's the first part of this whole practice routine. What I did to determine that I hit a 56 degree wedge 75 yards is I went out into a, the middle of a fairway. You could use a field anywhere that you're not target specific and just swing that 56 degree wedge at a comfortable backswing. For me, that's about a three quarter feel. So when I take the club back, I feel like the club's somewhere in this area. Not really trying to hit the ball hard, I'm just trying to make a very comfortable backswing to a nice full finish position. And I hit hundreds of balls over the course of days to determine how far that ball carried. And what I found was just about 75 yards was how far that ball carried. Once I had determined that, I was able to bring it out onto the golf course and say, all right, 
I'm going to hit this shot that distance using that same swing that I practice over and over again and see how it hits the green and ultimately reacts. Now you're better players and as you improve more and more, Jeremy, you'll be able to, to, to figure out what's going to happen spin-wise because you'll start to see a pattern. Your ball may back up two feet, it may release eight feet. It's hard to say until you get out there and practice it. But I'm going to demonstrate here the motion that I use from 75 yards and maybe it'll give you a baseline to, to go out and start to practice yourself. Here I've got a fairly narrow stance, and again, I'm not trying to hit the ball hard. I'm just making an easy golf swing. And that was to a full finished position. And as you can see, that carried exactly 75 yards. Not exactly online, but I've given myself a reasonable birdie putt here, and that keeps me in the game. But if you have any more questions about how to develop a repeating motion in your short game, just contact your local PGA professional. And thanks for the question, Jeremy.